Hello everyone, this is the last in my video series on dynamic panel data estimation using the generalized method of moments. This video explains the system GMM estimator which combines moments conditions for the model in levels with moments conditions for the model in first differences. In their 1998 paper, Blundell and Bond, extending the 95 work by Ariana and Barber, determined that difference GMM produces biased and inefficient estimates when the series is persistent and time period is short, and that under these conditions, the use of the lagged levels of the series as instruments provides weak instrumentation using the difference GMM estimator. With system GMM, though, these biases can be substantially reduced and more precise parameter estimates obtained with the use of additional moment conditions, which are the additional instruments. So pursuant to this, System GMM uses a two equation approach with additional instruments. And we're going to demo this using this three, equi uh, three variable model, Y, X1, and X2, with the lagged dependent variable included as a regressor making this a dynamic model. The first equation is expressed in levels, as you see here in red, with lagged differences as instruments. The second equation is expressed in first differences, as you see here again in red, with lagged levels in blue as instruments. Now notice in particular that the second lag of the dependent variable is the instruments for the first lag included as a regressor, while the lags of, the, of these two independent variables serve as instruments for their respective underlying regressors. And the same applies right here in the second equation. Oh, and before proceeding, in the specification, this add function is what separates the main equation from the list of instruments. What are the benefits of system GMM? Number one, the additional instruments have been found to yield more efficient parameter estimates. Number two, the two equation approach with additional instruments has been found to significantly improve efficiency. Number three, this estimator system GMM is robust to gaps in the data set as well as unbalanced panels problems which are magnified with difference GMM. And finally, unlike difference GMM, system GMM does not get rid of time constant variables. Additional notes are here for your attention. And so how do we choose between the two estimators, difference GMM and system GMM? The rule of thumb proposed by Bond, which I explained in the preceding video, is that we first estimate the original model using pooled OLS, making note of the coefficients of the lagged dependent variable. And we do the same with fixed effects and with difference GMM. The coefficients from pooled OLS serves as the upper bound and that from fixed effects, the lower bound. If the coefficient estimates obtained using difference GMM is greater than that from fixed effects, then we estimate the model using difference GMM. Otherwise, we go with system GMM. So to demo this, the data set that I'm using here gives us the coefficient of the lag dependent variable to be 0.42, which as you can see is less than that from fixed effects. And that's why we're gonna go with system GMM in the estimation. But to do so, we're going to have to, first of all, copy out our two system equations right here, all right, because we're going to paste it on the equation box on eViews to make things nice and easy for us. So now I head out to my eViews, and here I have my panel data sets with 49 groups. And as you can see, this fulfills the requirements that the number of groups must exceed the number of time periods here measured in years. So for ease of use, I'm using generic notations where Y is my dependent variable, X1 my first independent variable, and X2 my second independent variable. 
until eViews has a complete package that's specific, that specifically includes system GMM, we're going to have to first go to Object, click on New Object, and here, click on System, which is already pre-selected for us. And for name of object, if you want to, you can call it S underscore GMM, or you can call it Sys GMM, whatever you like. OK. And then right here in the System Equation dialog box, I paste the two equations. And notice that the coefficients have to be continuous. So C1 is the intercept then C2, C3, C4, and then down here, C5, C6, C7, C8, all right? And then we click on Estimate. And for Estimation Method, we're going to have to go here and select GMM Time Series. Because what happens is that with this selection, eViews pulls the data and runs it as pulled OLS in the system GMM environment. The system object here on AViews is not cognizant of the panel structure, and so it estimates the model using the data, uh, assuming the data are stacked in a time series style. So that's all we need to do. All the default options are good to go, and we click OK. And here we have the output. And assuming the J statistic is good, we have to be mindful of the estimates of the principal equation, which is the levels equation. And it starts from here to C4. And that's what you see right here. In particular, we have to make notes of the coefficients of the lag-dependent variable and, satis and, uh, and uh, be satisfied that it is statistically significant, which it is. And then these are the two regressors, explanatory variables, x1 and x2 with their corresponding p-values, both of which tell us that they are statistically significant. And so if I go back here to my PowerPoint to interpret the results, we have to, number one, be assured that the J-test of significance confirms that the instruments are valid. Number two, we need to look at the lagged dependent variable to be sure that it is statistically significant. That way we can say something about memory or persistence in the behavior of the dependent variable, as I explained two videos ago. Number three, examine the regressors to be sure that they are statistically significant. This, their sign and their size, so as to correctly explain their respective elasticities how they impact Y. And then for the key diagnostic here, it would be AR2 for reasons explained in the preceding video. And we want to confirm that there is no second order serial correlation. Optional in my view is examining the F statistic if your package provides it, because that helps you to speak to the fact that the entire model is statistically significant. Some things to note. Number one, remember the number of instruments has to be less than the number of individuals. Because if that's not the case, your results may be biased. Number two, these two estimators, difference GMM and system GMM, the results are actually short run. So that the coefficients tell us how each regressor affects Y in the short run. Thirdly, only the significant coefficients should be interpreted, as is the case with every regression analysis. And finally, for the long-run coefficients, if you are interested in those, then let's assume that our result shows that the coefficients for x1 and x2, namely beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat, are statistically significant meaning that in the short run, that x1 and x2 affects y. The corresponding long run coefficients can be calculated by dividing that coefficient by 1 minus the coefficients of the lagged dependent variable, as I show here for x1 
and here for x2. But again, this has to be based on the coefficients that have been found to be statistically significant. Some things to be aware of. Number one, the models, as we have just learned throughout the series, is a bit, uh, a bit com complicated. And uh, we want to make sure that we um, don't get, that we don't run away uh, thinking that every estimate provided are valid in all respects. So put some thoughts to the estimation process. Number two, if the null hypothesis for J-tests of over-identifying restrictions is not rejected, which is what we would like to see, it means the results do not provide evidence against the validity of the instruments. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that the instruments are truly valid, as the literature tells us. Number three, these estimators do not account for cross-section dependence. Number four, they are not appropriate for long panels. With long panels, you're probably better served using the pool bin group. Number five, so far, there really is little guidance from the literature as to how many instruments are too many. We know that the more instruments we use, the better are the more efficient the parameter estimates tend to be. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the choice of instruments, especially external instruments, is somewhat subjective. Therefore, theory and logic are important to justify their use. Perhaps that's the reason why in many of these studies, they stick to the internal instruments, which are the lagged regressors. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.